If you wanted a big screen MacBook, for the longest time your only option was a 16 or a 15 inch MacBook Pro. And while those are fantastic, they're usually complete overkill for the people that just want a bigger screen. But now Apple have introduced the MacBook Air 15 inch, and I think this is going to be a hugely popular laptop. I've been using it for about two weeks now, and I wanted to give you some advice on, is it good for students? Is it still portable? Is it worth the upgrade? And is the base model good enough? So let's get right into the review. All right, I wanna start with the biggest question I've been getting because honestly, it's been nonstop over on Instagram. And people want to know if this is still as portable as the 13 inch, or is it as portable as the 14 inch MacBook Pro? Because obviously this is a bigger screened laptop, which means it takes up a bigger surface area. And the simple answer to that is completely yes. Despite being a little bit heavier, this is still incredibly slim and still incredibly portable. So you're really not going to have to worry about taking this with you. This slides into the back portion of a laptop, no problem. And in my use, it hasn't weighed me down at all. Going to things like coffee shops, or if you're walking around your university campus, or if you're going from place to place or anything like that, this is still nice and slim and light enough to take with you everywhere, all while delivering that bigger screen experience, which is just kind of awesome. I'm so confident in that as well. It's actually been way slimmer and easier to take around than my 14 inch MacBook Pro, which is my daily driver by far, even though it's a little bit bigger. And I'd say it's more portable than the 12.9 inch iPad Pro with the magic keyboard attached. And that's because these are chunky boys compared to the MacBook Air 15 inch. These are so much thicker and you can really feel them if you put them into a bag or if you're carrying them around with you all day, they just have that kind of chunk to them. And even though the MacBook Air is a bigger surface profile in terms of laying one on top of another, the slimness just really helps it feel portable. When you're carrying it around, when you're putting it in your bag, when you're doing anything with it, it just feels nice and light even though the difference in weight isn't massive. So yeah, if that's your biggest concern, I honestly wouldn't worry about it. Even though it's got a bigger screen, this is still as portable as it ever was. And because this is an Apple computer, typically it's got that fantastic build quality. This thing feels incredible and you get the wonderful keyboard, the wonderful trackpad, and you obviously get the USB-C ports on the left side as well. And of course you're getting MagSafe with this one with a color match cable, which is cool. I also have to shout out the speakers on this MacBook Air because not only are they way louder than what you get on the 13 inch, but they also sound really decent as well. They're not quite as good as what you get on the MacBook Pro, but the fact that you can't even see them is kind of astonishing. So yeah, speakers on here are excellent. The only downside I think with the build of this is there's no USB-C slots on the right. They just kept them on the left. I think with a bigger laptop with a bit more space, it would have been nice to see them on the right too. The star of the show though really is the screen. The screen on here is 25% bigger edge to edge than the 13 inch and it really shows. I used to use a 16 inch MacBook Pro and going back to this reminded me of that in the best possible way. You get so much more space here to spread out and if you're doing things like design work or something like that, a bigger screen generally is always better. It also gets nice and bright, which is awesome. So if you're using this outside or if you're using this in a well-lit place, you're gonna be able to see it no matter what, which is fantastic. And even though it's not 120 hertz, honestly, it's absolutely fine. I'm used to 120 hertz on my MacBook Pro, but going back to this display, which is only 60, it kind of clicked back to normal really quickly. So I wouldn't put that down as a major concern either. The screen on here is the big upgrade, and I think Apple have done a fantastic job with it. Okay, second biggest question is, is the base model good enough? And is that eight gigabyte of RAM really enough for everyday use? And the simple answer for that is, once again, yes, it's totally fine. Even though that's harder for me to test because this 15 inch version that Apple sent out is a 16 gigabyte variant with 512 gigabytes of storage, I have used and reviewed the M2 base version of the 13 inch model. And back then I was kind of shocked at how well it kept up even with all of my creative endeavors. General computing tasks on this M2 variant is just incredible. Things open up nice and instantly and have a very kind of iPhone feeling to them where everything just just kind of pops and snaps and is speedy and rapid and responsive. And even when it comes to more heavier tasks, which are in my workflow, like photo editing and heavy video editing in Final Cut, which is like heavily compressed 4K footage, which is what I work with, it handles it no problem at all. And I'm going to edit this entire video on there. So if it's come out all right, you'll know it's all right. Hey, Editing Tom here and yep, everything's all good. Video edit's going fine. There's little times here and there where I can tell it's not as powerful as my Mac Studio, but the fact that it can even handle this sort of information, which is layers and layers of 4K, is awesome. So yeah, 
all good, even though it's not really designed for this kind of work. So for general purpose use and maybe some light photo and video work for maybe social edits for a company or for some PR campaigns or something like that, the air is absolutely going to be fine and the base model will be too. Even for kind of heavier graphic design work, you'd be surprised at how well this holds up. Honestly, I know any computer that starts over a thousand pound that only has 256 gigabytes of storage and eight gigabytes of RAM is like, good reason to be a bit miffed about. I don't think it's okay and most people out there don't think it's okay but it's really difficult to be annoyed when the laptop performs so well. If it can keep up with all of my creative workflow which is more than most people do and it can handle everything else really highly then it's hard to be annoyed at 8 gigabytes of RAM. Also within the base model is only 256 gigabytes of storage and it's on that slower SSD. Honestly to address the slow SSD up front you're not going to notice it in day-to-day -day use. I haven't noticed it at all. The only time I've seen it is when I'm transferring a really huge file from the laptop to an external drive or something like that. If that's something you do every day, then sure, you might see a little bit of difference, but for average everyday use of opening and closing apps and using the computer for general tasks, you will not see a difference. There's nothing to worry about. The next question is, is 256 gigabytes enough storage? And this is something that's going to only apply to you. Mac takes up around 30 to 40 gig of storage, which leaves you at about 200 gig of usable space. For me, that is a little bit too low, but I'm using all these creative apps. I've got large video files and video projects, which take up, you know, 100 gig sometimes. So for me, I know that's not enough, but for the general user who this Air is really aimed at, 200 gig is probably okay. And of course you can always buy an external SSD and back stuff up to there if you're really concerned about it. But yeah, this is still something that's worth bearing in mind. Before we talk about battery life or any other concerns, I did want to thank the sponsor of this video, Paperlike. If you're an iPad user or thinking about grabbing one for school, college or work and you want a way to protect that wonderful display while also enhancing the experience of using it, then Paperlike might be for you. Paperlike is a screen protector for iPad that makes it feel like you're actually writing on paper. They use NanoDot technology which is spread over the surface of the protector which adds resistance and grip to your pencil inputs, removing that unnatural feeling of writing on glass and replacing it with that familiar papery feel. This is the new and updated Paperlite 2.1 which means you're going to be getting an expert backed Swiss based manufactured product, which gives you much better overall visibility and clarity during use compared to the earlier versions. Also to celebrate going back to school, Paperlike is offering their digital pro planner for free with any hardware purchase from July the 31st until September the 17th. This is a beautiful fully fledged planner for the iPad that works with your favorite note taking apps. It's a perfect digital companion to keep yourself organized and it comes with free lifetime updates too. So if you want to check Paperlike out and get the digital pro planner for free check out the link in the description below of course a huge thank you goes out to paperlike for sponsoring this video okay moving on to other concerns now let's talk about the battery life because i was actually hoping that this 15 inch model would deliver like a really decent boost to battery life over the 13 inch model but from my testing and what i've seen is it's pretty much the same and actually that's okay because the same is still really, really decent. So if you're using this for a heavy day of work, expect it to last all day, no problem. You could even spend a few hours in creative apps and browse the internet and use Chrome and all that sort of stuff and you'll get a day, no problem. Very confident to tell you that. But if you are doing those lighter tasks like just browsing the web or just typing something up or just researching or doing anything like that, you're going to get multiple days of use out of this, which is awesome. And I'm more than happy to take it off the charger in the morning and just leave the charger at home and not even worry about getting through the day. I also wanted to bring up thermal throttling as well because a lot of people were concerned about that with the 13 inch and hopefully the 15 inch would be a little bit better. But once again, it's pretty much the same, which means 98% of people aren't gonna see any thermal throttling of this device at all. The only time when I've seen it thermally throttle, and this is just from an eye perspective, I don't have any kind of specific scientific test to do this, is when I'm exporting a really large file from Final Cut Pro. But if you're going to be doing something like that often, then this isn't the laptop for you. So yeah, thermals, once again, not an issue, but it's not any better than what the 13 inch was. Okay, next big question. So do you get the MacBook Pro 14 inch or the MacBook Air 15 inch? Because now they're relatively similar. And honestly, the real answer there is coming down to what sort of work you're going to do on these laptops, not just comparing them spec for spec. If you know you're going to be doing a lot of creative stuff, when you open up your MacBook, you open up Final Cut and Photoshop and Lightroom and all of those sorts of things, and maybe you're doing some graphics work, or you're just pushing the laptop a lot, you'll absolutely want to go for the 14 inch or the 16 inch MacBook Pro. It's got more ports, it's got more power, it's got a better screen with a higher refresh rate. 
it's just a more professional device. However, if you're looking for more classical kind of computing tasks, you're on the move a lot, and you know, you might still wanna use a bit of creativity here and there, then the Air models are still fantastic, and the 15 is a really, really fantastic way to go. Put it this way, if I wasn't doing this YouTube channel, and I just wanted a MacBook for kind of general use and to kind of explore my interest in photography and filmmaking, then I would absolutely go for an Air over the Pro at the moment, because this is just so portable and so nice to carry around with you. So yes, this is a fantastic laptop for students and it's a fantastic laptop for probably 95% of Mac buyers out there. People that just want a Mac to be really decent and to do really decent things and to last a long time. However, and this is quite a big however, it's still an expensive laptop. It starts here at £1,400 in the UK which isn't cheap at all. Now you can get educational discount on this with some other bonuses if you buy it before you go back to school or college, whatever. So those are definitely worth checking out, but it's still an expensive laptop and there's lots of other things you could look at here. Before finishing this review, I did want to suggest one more thing. And while I've sung the praises of the base model of this laptop, and I really do think they are good for most people, I think if you can, you should absolutely stretch to 16 gigabytes of RAM. That just means the laptop's going to last a lot longer. And if you're already spending one thousand four hundred pounds jumping up a little bit extra just to get some more life out of it is going to be totally worth it so that pretty much rounds up this review i hope you enjoyed it if you've got any other questions about this macbook then let me know in the comments below and i'll try my best to get back to you but yeah i've really enjoyed it and like i say if i wasn't doing this youtube channel i would snap one of these up no problem anyway that's all from me and i'll see you all in the next one